So, like you mentioned, Eric, 5,000 kids have now seen this mm -hmm. tornado documentary, this Project Tornado documentary. Uh, but this is our chance to kind of show everybody what all these kids have been learning. Yeah, it takes a lot of work to go out to all of these schools, and it's important that more and more people actually get the right information. So we wanted to share a little bit of the video uh, with you this morning um, to just kind of show you, you know, how we get kids excited about weather and severe weather safety. And the video is very eye-opening. We have it for you here now in its entirety, Project Tornado 2012. Take a look. Little on this earth can withstand the violence behind the strongest tornado. A vortex of air and debris swirling faster than the fastest race car. Today we are learning more about how tornadoes form in the hopes of predicting these killer storms. Tornadoes can create significant swaths of destruction in just seconds. Those caught in its path are faced with a life or death situation. Oh my God, this is not good. There is no way to prevent tornadoes from happening. When all of the conditions come together, they are inevitable. Tornadoes have touched down on every continent except Antarctica. None of us expect to live there for the rest of our lives, so it's important to do everything now to increase our chance for survival the next time one hits. In order to study these powerful storms, let's go back to 1967 when one of our towns was hit by a tornado, Belvedere. The tornado formed over Cherry Valley and raced east. By the time it reached Belvedere, it was an F4, one of the strongest possible. No one was ready for a tornado of this magnitude, and 24 people died. August 28, 1990, is a date the people of Plainfield, Illinois won't forget. An F5 tornado struck the town with little advanced warning. Fortunately, tornadoes like these are rare because the only way to survive them is to be below ground. You may remember January 7, 2008, not for a snowstorm, but for a tornado. A winter tornado formed just east of Loves Park and leveled homes around Edwards Apple Orchard in Poplar Grove. This tornado was caught on tape as it met a Union Pacific freight train head on. November 2010, the unthinkable happened again when a large tornado struck northern Illinois. This time, Caledonia was in its path. The damage was incredible. Grain bins were punched, wires were hanging in the streets, and many homes were damaged or destroyed. Thankfully, the Poplar Grove tornado a year earlier taught people to expect tornadoes any time of the year, and no one lost their lives. Last year was the most deadly year for tornadoes in the United States history, with twisters striking large cities like St. Louis, Raleigh, North Carolina, Joplin, Missouri, and Tuscaloosa, Alabama. These scenes were from last month, when tornadoes near Dallas, Texas, actually picked up semi-trailers, hurling them hundreds of feet into the air on live TV. Every year that goes by without a tornado makes us that much more vulnerable the next year. That's why it's important to understand what goes into making a tornado touch down. First, in order to get thunderstorms to form, you need warm, moist air. This usually comes from the Gulf of Mexico. As that air is confronted by a completely opposite air mass, one that is cool and dry, thunderstorms form. As these storms grow tall, they can encounter wind shear. Wind shear is the change of wind direction with height. If the wind is out of the southeast at ground level, 
While the wind within the cloud is from the southwest, the storm can begin to twist, and if the shear is strong enough, the storm begins to rotate. Only the strongest of these rotating storms goes on to produce a tornado. At 13 WREX, there are more than a dozen computers helping us see if conditions are right for a tornado. Most times we're able to give you a heads up hours in advance with a tornado watch. But what if you're outside, away from your TV? Just watch for changing weather. If you hear thunder, go inside and check with us. If we observe the storm twisting or if a trained storm spotter sees a funnel, the tornado warning goes out. This is when everyone should seek shelter. The main goal during a tornado is to put as many walls as possible between you and the swirling debris. Basements are the best, with the area under stairwells the safest. The next best place is an interior room like a closet or bathroom. However, the rules change if you're in a mobile home. If you live in a mobile or manufactured home, you're actually safer outside. Mobile homes can be rolled or even shredded by a tornado. The part of the country most likely to see tornadoes is called Tornado Alley. Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas are the states with the most tornadoes, followed by Florida, Nebraska, and Iowa. But Illinois is also at risk as well. You've probably seen this in the corner of your TV screen. This lets us show you all of the weather watches and warnings. But it's important to know the colors. A severe thunderstorm watch is displayed in orange. When there is large hail or damaging wind, the watch becomes a warning and is displayed in bright yellow. Tornado watches are displayed in red. When warnings are issued, the map turns bright pink. This is the time to act. Most counties have outdoor tornado sirens. Hearing their loud wail assures everyone outside can get the warning. If the skies are dark and you hear that sound, seek shelter immediately. It is important everyone is safe during a tornado emergency. Even though you are about to complete our Project Tornado course, it is important you share what you've learned with your family and friends. Coming up with a plan during a tornado won't do anyone any good. Plan now. And rest assured, the 13 Weather Authority will be watching and waiting for the next tornado to touch down. Will you be ready for it? Amazing, amazing presentation. I'm so glad so many kids have gotten to see this. Mm -hmm. What If we could take away one thing from this video, what's the most important nugget of information? I think the one thing is to understand the difference between a watch and a warning. A watch means you need to watch the weather. Uh, a warning is the last time that we're going to tell you you need to do something. It's your last warning. So watch the weather and then last warning. So you act on the warning. Warning the means right now. Yep. Okay, we're going to talk about your predictions for tornadoes this season. Mm -hmm. Coming up next, we'll be right back.